Okay. Yep. Start whenever you would like to start. Okay. I will do that. All right. I'm going to share my screen. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming to this first uh, edition of the briefing in April. Um, I am uh, recording this today because unfortunately I have a conflict and so it made the most sense um, to just do this and then fingers crossed for uh, Melissa that there are no sorts of gremlins that makes uh, presenting this miserable. Uh, but again, hopefully things will go well and if I can get this out of the way. All right, I will turn this into a slideshow and get going. So again, thank you all. Um, my apologies for not being here, but um, wanted to let you know what has been happening in Harrisburg. And after the legislature not being in session for you know, the first three months, they have really hit the ground running um, and are doing quite a bit of things. So I just wanted to let you all know. So what happened um, recently? We saw, unfortunately, Senate Bill 831. This is Senator Yaw's. Um, pretty awful carbon capture and sequestration bill, sequestration bill um, passed the Senate 30 to 20. Um, surprisingly, we, we lost seven Democrats there. I was pretty surprised to see that many folks vote for such a terrible bill. And then we also saw um, Senate Bill 819, yet another terrible bill from Senator Yaw. This is um, felony penalties for protest. It passed 32 to 18, and we lost four Democrats there, unfortunately. Um, so I do think some accountability is needed in the notes. We will have listed uh, those 11 Democrats along with a call-in script that you can call in and leave a message or you know, just speak to someone directly or maybe even craft that into an email um, and let them know that you're disappointed, right? Because these are pretty terrible bills. I don't think anyone really should be voting for those. And you, know, you can not be opposed to carbon capture and still oppose this terrible bill because it's really setting the bar low um, for Pennsylvania, some of the lowest standards in the country. And really, again, we shouldn't be voting for them. But again, check the notes. Um, if any of these senators are your senators, please feel free to make a call um, or send an email email and just hold them accountable for these pretty lousy votes. And then um, water privatization bills, we had these come out of House Consumer Affairs Committee. Um, these are all good bills. I don't know how familiar folks are with Act 12, but this was um, established to allow um, public utilities to purchase municipal sort of water systems. And unfortunately, it's become all about um, private companies purchasing perfectly financially sound public utilities and it's become really controversial and it hasn't had the intended consequences. Unfortunately, it's had negative consequences. And so these bills um, put some guardrails onto that process, you know, giving the PUC more time to evaluate these proposed private acquisitions, um, easing the impact on ratepayers because we often see um, these private companies come in and sort of jack up the rates. Um, and also imposing a purchase price ceiling. So then folks are not recuperating, you know, recovering millions and millions of dollars um, more than they really should be and that being passed on to consumers. So these are good bills, um, have a good feeling about these. Hopefully we'll see them get a floor vote, but just wanted to flag that they came out of um, House Consumer Affairs recently. And then we also saw um, some movement on an EV fee bill. We saw language from House Bill 2184 amended into Senate Bill 656. It was a gut and replace. Um, Senate Bill 656 was a, a not very good EV fee bill um, establishing, I think, a $290 a year fee. Um, 2184 does what is on the slide here. It starts at $125 yearly fee in 2025, and then it goes up $25 a year until 2029. Um, and then in 2030, it's based on the prior year's fee and a consumer price index. Um, again, we're sort of neutral right now. I think everybody believes that EV fees um, are coming at some point fairly soon, if not, you know, within the next few months. Uh, this fee schedule is okay. It's, it's not punitive. Um, but we are concerned that there is some negotiating happening now and, and these fees can increase. So just wanted to flag this to keep your eye on this. Um, we may be neutral on it. We also may end up opposing it depending on whether Republicans uh, really try to jack up this fee schedule. And then I also wanted to flag House Bill 1943. Uh, this passed out of House uh, Environmental Resources and Energy Committee. This requires the disclosure of fracking chemicals. So 30 days prior to drilling, uh, the driller, driller would have to file a report with the EP containing the names of the chemicals used um, and where the, the well is actually located. And then DEP posts this information on a public website. Pretty 
pretty simple stuff. You think it should already be happening, but it's not. Um, but good chance that this could get a vote uh, in the House. We do know this is also a priority for the administration to get um, the disclosure of fracking chemicals in statute. And then not surprisingly, uh, the, the big news from March was press. Uh, the update to our clean energy standards and PACER, the Reggie replacement. We still have not seen bill language. Um, I'm thinking sometime towards mid-May, maybe early May. We'll see. But again, there are co-sponsor memos um, on the legislature's website. That's pretty much all we know about both of these bills at this point. I'm still waiting uh, for bill language. Once we have that, we will dive into that on this call. But as of now, just uh, twiddling our thumbs and waiting. And then session days, here's what the rest of April will look like. Um, the House will be in five days uh, and the Senate just two days, but things will be ramping up a lot in May, getting ready for budget season in June and June. Um, they will be in almost every day as they try to hammer out a state budget. And then some committee meetings I wanted to flag for folks. Um, consumer protection in the House is voting on House Bill 1615, which is an energy... Uh, appliance standards, energy efficiency standards for residential and commercial appliances. I think there's like 17 to 22 um, appliances that fall under that. So that's a, a good bill. Um, good to see that getting some, mo some movement and likely possibly getting um, a floor vote in the House on that too. And then I do, I did want to flag um, Wednesday, April 17th, there's a Senate Democratic Policy Committee on the public health impacts of the road spreading of oil and gas waste or brine. And there's a link here um, on the slide to register. And we'll also include that in the notes if folks are interested in attending that. And then next week, oh, I'm sorry, this week, I am uh, <laughs> a day behind and, and a week behind in my mind. But possible votes this week in the House. My apologies. Um, House Bill 1166 from Rep Steele. I talked about this on a prior episode. This is banning um, driveway sealants that contain high PAHs or polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. They tend to uh, run off and end up in our waterways. So good to see that bill moving. And then House Bill 254 from Rep Mursky. This would allow portions of the bed of Lake Erie to be leased, to be leased by the Commonwealth for wind energy generation systems or windmills. So um, just giving DEP that authorization, I'm not aware of any proposed windmill developments, but I could also be wrong. Um, but thinking that these bills can get some movement either this week, um, this week in the house or later this month. And I think that may be my last slide. It is. Um, well, again, thank you all for um, joining us. Unfortunately, I'm not here officially to answer any questions, but feel free to you know send me an email or Melissa or Nate can sort of jot them down and I can respond via email, or you can just hold on to them until next week um, and I can get back to you and answer your questions. All right, take care everyone. I will now turn it over to Melissa for her portion. Thank you.